Alrighty, y'all. We are on episode eight. Wow, that's crazy. Only eight episodes, one season, and already have over 70,000 followers on Instagram, already have so many listeners on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting. This is all God's doing, God's work. I know people that have been doing it a long time, and the fact that this is only episode eight and what content I'm making and I'm putting out there is getting around is crazy so thank you so much if you are tuning in if you're subscribed to me if you're listening to my podcast and you love to be informed and you love what I talk about I love that and I'm gonna utilize this episode to actually get even deeper with you guys just share a little bit more about myself I know a lot of people are coming from different hosts that I had on and so I want to dive a little bit deeper into my testimony and then giving some advice about how I change certain behaviors and habits. So before I start with that, I got my notes so that I don't get sidetracked. So if you guys see me moving my head, um, that's why I try to make sure I have my bullet points. But I have some eBooks out. You guys have been purchasing those like crazy. Okay, thank you for the support. That's what helps me with the podcast sessions. That's what helps funds it. So thank you guys for supporting that um, and buying those and your guys' reviews. Love them. I love to read how you guys are feeling about the books and how they're transforming for your relationships. I have one ebook called How to Magnify the King and Your Husband. Um, it's a communication book and it's really great to really self-reflect before communicating to your man and how to just talk to them. Men are simple creatures. I've kind of learned that from being married myself and they love respect and praise. So definitely encourage you guys to check out that book. Regardless, every wife should purchase that book. It's it's great to just skim through, read through, and apply what you want to apply to your own marriage. And I have another ebook. It's called I'm the Prize Said Who. It's a wife's guide, me, to eliminate the spirit of ego. I think that everyone should buy that. I've heard even married men say that they learned a lot from that book as well. It's just eliminating pride and ego. You have to if you want a healthy marriage you have to let go of pride you have to let go of ego so it's a deep deep self-reflection ebook I self-reflected a lot I had to ask myself if I'm the prize you have such a this society this generation is all about themselves it's very narcissistic because of social media especially within women right now we're really struggling with narcissism And we're really trying to push that we're the prize and that men need to like succumb to us. So if you really want to be in a marriage and you're wondering why relationships are not working out for you, I definitely recommend purchasing that book. Single woman, married woman, men, check that ebook out. I also have a free marital guide. It's a small, short guide that you are more than free to check out and I will have the link below and my YouTube and you guys can check it out on my Instagram it's in my pillar link so besides that what other announcements before I get into my testimony oh I also am now doing coaching and counseling because a lot of you guys have been emailing me wanting one-on-one sessions I was counseling women before especially women um and helping them to gain self-awareness, hold themselves accountable, and teach them some coping co- coping mechanisms and how to communicate to their partner. So I'm now going to offer it to other people, one-on-one or even couples. I've been doing that actually for the last couple of years from being the, the, the lead speaker of an entire Bible study and having to counsel all of those women. So I've been actually counseling for quite some time and I'm going to start offering it to the public that's watching my podcast. So check that out as well and you can sign up for that. All right, now getting into my testimony. A video went viral, almost viral, you guys, almost like a million views. And I was I was speaking about my testimony on the Honest Truth pod. You guys can go check that out. But I wanted to really elaborate what was going on in my mind You guys can check out the clip that you guys seem to really love and been reaching out to me about where I was talking about 
what led to the fall of my marriage. My marriage endured a year-long separation because I was not emotionally disciplined. I was struggling with now now knowing and now being educated on BPD, so borderline personality disorder. I could not contain my emotions for the life of me. I was a very neurotic woman. I was very insecure. And it talks about in the word that a wife could either build her house or break it down. And I was definitely breaking it down with my emotions, not having emotional stability, not being taught how to have emotional stability. I'd never seen it. i never seen emotional discipline growing up. i just seen everyone blurt out exactly how they feel, very toxic environment. And so now that I'm an adult, and now I'm in a marriage, I have no idea how to contain. I saw how my husband was showing emotional discipline. I wanted to get there, didn't know how to. So just a little bit more about my testimony since people have been wanting to know and have been asking me, they've been asking me, how did I change? How did I get out of those behaviors? How did I get out of that cycle? So just a little bit about my testimony. I talk about it a lot in previous episodes, but I was really, really struggling mentally. And I thought my husband was my enemy, kind of went deeper into in the clip, but I thought my husband was my enemy. And when I got married, all of this ugliness was now coming out and I I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle change. I couldn't handle criticism. I was hypersensitive. Criticism to me, I would hear it if my husband said, hey, we need to change this and that or, or hey, I don't like that you're doing this, this and that. I would just take it in such an offense. I would deflect. I was a master deflector. And I got to the point where I just wanted happiness and I just couldn't handle the masculine assertiveness and order and guiding. I just couldn't handle it. So I eventually kicked my husband out. I wanted to be free from being a wife and I wanted to be happy again. I just... I, I, and again, I was being tortured with, if we think about it on the spiritual side, I was definitely being tortured with demons. Um, I was I was definitely being tortured in my mind that my husband was my enemy. If I eliminate him, then I'll feel better and I'll be better. So I kicked him out. And the best thing that happened for my marriage is that he decided to give me space and he left. He did not come back. And we went into a year long separation and it was so transforming for me. I went to therapy about two weeks after the separation because I realized I still was not happy. And I didn't know what was going on with me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, My husband modeled very well stability and what a healthy human being looks like. So I knew that there was something wrong with me because he was calmer. He wasn't always blurting out of his insecurities. He was pretty level headed, but I just couldn't understand what was what was wrong with me. And something my husband would say is that this I don't blame you. I blame your childhood. And so when he was not home anymore and I was by myself, I realized, okay. There is an issue. I can't pinpoint what it is, so I'm going to go get help. And I went to therapy, and I went to a couple of sessions, and I was very honest in my therapy sessions about what what was going on. And I even read text messages. I tried to be as honest as possible instead of a victim, instead of only showing my perception. I actually went in and said, I don't know what's wrong. So can you help me to understand what's wrong? And through showing text messages and just being more honest about the conversation, what I said, what what he said, after a couple of sessions, the therapist said, you show all the signs of BPD and paranoia, schizophrenia. So that is kind of my testimony. I spent a year long I spent I spent time in a year long separation by myself to practice and retrain my brain to unplug all of the trauma, to unplug all of the triggers and start thinking more logically instead of so emotionally. 
Now, I want to kind of share because a lot of messages that I've been getting, people have been coming to me and sharing their testimonies and sharing their testimonies with their relationship and that I, the way I broke things down in a couple of clips and on other podcasts sounds a lot like the relationship they're in. Or some people have came to me and said, this sounds like me. What should I do? What is this? Um, I want to kind of talk about what BPD is. So BPD is really a, it's a personality disorder. It's a loss of identity. That's what I've come to learn it as. I'm not a psychologist, but I can give uh, you guys the knowledge that I've um, taken in and what I've learned is that you have a loss of identity. You don't have a foundation. And one thing I'm going to talk about on my podcast is that my foundation is rooted in God. Um, I learned my identity through him and his word and having being grounded in something is going to help you break free from mental health, this, these mental health issues. It, it really is. And um, I, I'm going to I'm going to read a I'm going to read what BPD stems from. So it's a character issue. So trying to present as someone someone else and trying to clean up your the performance of yourself so trying to have a clean performance trying to show perfection that's going to lead to you having mood swings every time you hear criticism every time you feel like someone doesn't like you it puts you in a bad mood you're constantly very hard on yourself you perceive life in a very negative way as well it also comes from some form of trauma as well so Okay, so basically what's going on that I learned about myself is that my brain was on high alert consistently. So I was it it came from my my childhood where I I, I watched this TED talk where this woman said, you know, when you go out into a forest and there's a bear, your brain's going to go into fight, fight or flight. Right. And what happens in that process, your brain is going to like take over your body and choose a survival method. But what happens if the bear is coming home every day? And so if you have gone through some form of trauma, your brain every time now into your adulthood when it is triggered, your brain goes straight into survival. And so that clip where I said I viewed my husband as my enemy is that he now as my spouse in the house with me, he was triggering me. And my brain was making him out to be the bear all over again. And so I would lash out. I would get loud or I would try to flee. It was always fight or flight. It was never neutral. It was never neutral. And this, you know, when I got diagnosed with BPD, that's, you know, where it's stemming from is your brain is on high alert and it doesn't know how to it doesn't know how to like be in the present moment. So I had to retrain my brain that this isn't a fight or flight situation. In order to do that, I will give a couple of things that I did. One is visual and hearing uh, grounding practices. So visual and hearing, being in the present moment like right now and just focusing on little things in the room and being very present with that. So smelling whatever the room smells like right now, listening to every little thing, trying to quiet my mind and pinpoint where everything is coming from because my brain is constantly living in the past or the future. So basically I'm always reliving the trauma and I can't hear my husband for what he's actually saying to me. I'm hearing what he's saying as the past, whatever I heard in the past, whatever abuse I endured in the past, that's what I'm hearing things as. Or the future, I'm trying to protect, I'm constantly paranoid of the trauma happening again, right? So I had to train my brain to be very present. This is what's happening today. Stop being hyper fixated on the past and the future. People ask me how I changed. I do want to get to that real quick as well. How did I change though? Because someone commented and said, you are one in like, a million people who was that deep into 
into that because some people will be in that toxic cycle for the rest of their lives they'll live with BPD for the rest of their lives they won't ever change and grow out of those things and I want to say too like I believe I was diagnosed with those things and I was able to pinpoint the issue and then attack the issue so I don't I don't believe I have a majority of any of these symptoms anymore and that's by the glory of God I also believe that a mustard seed of faith you can move a mountain so if you truly believe and you go into a war to defeat it instead of sitting back and being a victim and being like, dang, I just have this and you always have it. Right. So I'm a very competitive person. When people ask, how did I change? I'm a very competitive person. Um, it was my downfall, but also my uprise where I don't like being put in a box and told I can't do something. Honestly, if you tell me I can't do something, it makes me, it, it pushes me to, to want to fix that. As soon as I went to therapy and I was diagnosed and they said, you have schizophrenia, you have uh, paranoia schizophrenia, you have BPD. I asked them, okay, so can this be fixed? Can this be healed? Can this change? And they said, no, you have to take medication. And being told no, that I'll be suffering for us of my life. There was no way. I just don't believe in that. That's limiting God. I think that if you can retrain in your brain completely. I also went to a different therapist. I went to a male therapist after I was told that. And he doesn't believe in that stuff. He believes you can retrain, you know, your brain. But if my brain has been conditioned through trauma and experiences and seeing things over and over and over again, I can also retrain my brain to think a completely different way now again, right? So because everything is, is training and conditioning and being groomed to think a certain way. So... Just like your parents when you're at home and they repeat something to you over and over and over and over and over again, that will, that will be instilled in a child. So now as an adult, you have to be the parent to your inner child and you have to repeat, 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 repetitively tell yourself something over and over and over again so that your brain starts following that. Does that make sense? This is what I've been learning. Um, and I'm very competitive. So I was like, I'm, I'm taking this as a challenge. I'm going to retrain my brain. I'm going to do it the hard way. I'm not taking medication. I'm going to do it the hard way. And I do believe, although you will struggle if you, you know, continue on with your uh, new coping mechanisms and your new um, behavioral methods, you can you can relieve most of these these symptoms. So for the people that have been asking, how did I change? That's how I changed. Um, I want to kind of, I want to kind of share what BPD, the symptoms of BPD that I had for those that want more in depth, um, a more in depth explanation of what was going on. I'm going to read from my notes. Um, BPD can affect your ability to appreciate life. So you view life in a very negative way. That's definitely was my viewpoint I was it was hard for me to consistently feel upbeat and happy um uh, you also dread being deserted by your friends or family or loved ones you have deep abandonment issues so you might be emotionally manipulative and try to manipulate situations to feel loved yeah um you have a negative you know self-image of yourself so for example, one minute you'll like yourself, the next minute you won't. Um, you're really, really hard on yourself. That's, again, aligned with having a negative perspective in life. Very negative. And a lot of people today I've, I've kind of learned are struggling with this. Um, people are very attracted to negativity. That's why gossip blogs do so well. That's why people will comment something negative before they comment something positive. It tells a lot about your character and how you perceive life if you view something even what I'm saying right now you view it and you're instantly thinking something negative like oh this girl probably just thinks she knows it all like you're always thinking negative <laughs> and so when I see comments like that I have to like let go of sometimes like the hate comments come like to be so quick to think negative and to look for flaws in something that's how you view yourself right people that comment some positivity oh my gosh this was so good I just learned something from this like they're more open and more um in a more healed place in their life to what to be willing to accept any type of correction to be willing to hear new perspectives you know it it so basically that's that's the answer to that um you have good or bad moments um good or bad 
emotions that can switch within moments. So one minute you can feel good, the next minute you can feel bad. So for example, for me, I, I could be sitting, you know, with my partner and he says something like, you want to go get ice cream? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. And I'm happy. And then the next minute I'm like, I'm sad because I feel like, you know, you don't you don't ask me that question enough. Now I'm over here thinking bad like that. I switched so fast. So these are some of the effects. I'm also going to read a few more. Um, you're easily triggered, very easily triggered, easily offended. You have um, a faulty feeling of self. You can't think straight or be grounded, right? You say hurtful words to your spouse that you feel embarrassed by the next day. So you're always apologizing. You're always apologetic. Dang, I feel bad that I said X, Y, and Z. Um, uh, self, it can be extreme too, where you have self-hurt practices. Um, you dread being deserted, and but it ends up pushing other people away. So basically you're, you're just a highly emotional person, very uh very very sensitive and lack emotional discipline so that's a little bit more into bpd and if you are someone who has messaged me and asked you know hey i i don't know if my partner is also struggling with this i'm gonna list out a couple of things to ask yourself when it comes to your partner because we we lack knowledge on mental health issues you know especially my husband he didn't know what he didn't know what BPD was. They didn't grow up learning what this is. They didn't know what schizophrenia is. These, these mental health issues that need you no know, treatment and need to go and get actual help from psychologist. Um, he didn't know what these. He didn't know what any of this was. So I'm gonna ask a list of questions. So for partners that are suspecting if your your partner or your spouse has BPD, are you constantly paranoid of what to say? So you're constantly walking on eggshells. Do they have quick emotional episodes that are nonsensical, that make no sense? You're trying to figure out, you're constantly trying to put the puzzles together of like, okay, how do I make you feel better in this situation? I don't understand how we got here. I don't understand how you got to this conclusion or why you feel like this. Do they have views of you that are either all positive or all negative? So for me, there will be moments where I look at my husband and say, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. You're so awesome. And the next minute I'm saying, uh, we're not happy together. We're not happy we should separate we should divorce i'd always throw that out there um do you have a, a do you feel like you can never win uh, no matter what you say you've tried every which way to communicate with them and you tried soft you tried more assertive you tried my husband used to um have me write down my feelings and just try to like go through you know everything that i've written down and try to distinguish the problem um he's tried everything and that can get draining because you just feel like you're never winning no matter what you try to do you can't resolve the problem um does your spouse's desires always change so you're never certain how to keep them happy right and another thing with someone with like bpd a very emotional person is always always pursuing happiness over purpose so they're always seeking to feel happy and i actually recommend people that are trying to heal from the symptoms of bpd is to get off social media get off social media because you will see a video and it will have you thinking your partner is the worst partner they didn't get you the big bouquet of flowers they're, they're not a good spouse you know get off social media social media is a facade um they play off of people i believe that have unhealed you know, baggage and and they're constantly breaking up relationships. People are constantly breaking up with their partners because of what they see on social media. So if you think that you are struggling with the with being a very emotional person, highly triggered, um, have a lot of self doubt, insecure, fragile person, get off social media. Take take a break while you're going to therapy and working through, um, working through relieving these symptoms and. <clears throat> learning better communication skills, building self-awareness. Um, another another question to ask yourself is, uh, does your partner always blame you or accuse you of making statements that you never did? That's a part of also, it could be also linked. I, I've learned that paranoia, schizophrenia is linked with um, BPD because you're always, your brain again is on high alert, high, high alert. 
in like the survival mode, fight or flight mode. So it can also put you in paranoid states uh, in your mind. And so you could, your brain could be telling you that your partner said something they never said, right? That's coming from the trauma. Um, do you feel controlled by the crazy conduct? And if you have answered yes to majority of these, your partner actually might be dealing with some mental health issues. And in, in that case, I do want to state this because my my husband, my husband leaving um, and me building self-awareness and holding myself accountable, I will say once I came to realization how much that probably did affect my spouse, I want to say that you are only human. You are only human being. Uh, putting that much on someone's plate to deal with how dealing with a neurotic woman, dealing with craziness like that, a very unhealed, easily triggered person, they need to go seek out help, period. They need to go seek out help. You are not every hurtful, harmful thing they've said to you as well is all due to like the mental health issues that they're suffering with. One thing I'll say is that I was being tortured in my mind and a lot of things I said I didn't mean, but I just could not stop the thoughts and the emotions. When you are a very emotional person and you are also dealing with the trauma um, and being unhealed, you say a lot of like you say a lot of things to stop the pain that's going on. You know, these emotions aren't like I feel like normal people, normal heal people feel when I felt a feeling, it would be so intense. It would be so, so powerful. I could not keep my mouth shut for the life of me. There was no way I could not hold my tongue. I just had to speak out of that emotion consistently. It's the only thing that got me to like feel like I could breathe. And it, it was torturing my mind um, to not say anything. So a lot of things that they're saying, it's like I felt like. My body and my my mouth and my emotions were separate from my spirit. Like there was a lot of things I would tell myself, don't say this, don't be like this, don't do this. But I just could not stop. I could not. I didn't have any control over my body. So I want you to know that there's there's really nothing you can do for someone like that. They really do need to retrain their brain. They have to want it far more than you want it for them. They have to want to change. I was I wanted to change like when my husband left there wasn't I didn't know if my husband was ever going to come back you know I didn't know if he was ever going to come back it was a year in I changed for me I didn't want to be that wife to anybody I didn't want to be that woman to anybody <laughs> you know it hurt my heart that I had such a good man and I cried I cried about it especially when I was learning about myself in therapy and I'm learning that like I was wrong like, I was so wrong. My emotions made me feel so right, but I was so wrong, you guys. Um, and building that self-awareness and holding myself accountable, I, I did it for me. I changed for me. I just could not imagine putting another human being through that. And I, and I, and I wanted to be a healed woman, and I wanted, whether my husband will ever know it or not, if he, if he ever knew it or not, that he, that didn't go into vain, you know? How how sad and depressing for the men that have put up with a very neurotic woman who is not emotionally disciplined. And then they leave heartbroken because there was nothing they could have done to, to change no matter what they try to do, no matter how much love they try to give. There was nothing they could do to change her. They leave and then that woman goes and, bees, and she goes and gets with other men. That is... That is heartbreaking. And she never changes. It's like all that that she put in, all that she sacrificed went in, you know, went to, you know, went to the trash, you know. And and I get why there's men that watch my podcast and they're angry at women, you know. I get it. Like how frustrating, how frustrating. And, and the feminist movement and our food and social media and Hollywood has programmed us women. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we are struggling with BPD and mental health now more than we ever have before. So um, 
and and the reason why I'm speaking for women is because women are three times more likely to have BPD than men. It's a very emotional, I believe it's a very emotional mental health issue. And women are more emotional creatures as much as we want to refute that. We are. Um, we So with all being said, um, I want you to, for anybody that's dealing with a partner, and some women could be dealing with a man that has BPD, you know, I want you to also prioritize yourself and no matter what they say to you when they're having these episodes and these lash outs, you need to know that this is coming from them being tortured. And you also need to prioritize filling up your own cup. So being around loved ones, I remember I used to hate it. Oh, I used to hate it. My husband would go and spend time with his family and friends and I'll try to control that because I felt abandoned and I could feel, I could physically feel that he didn't want to be around me. (laughs) <laughs> and that hurt me so bad, you know, and um, I'm glad he did because going back home to a wife who was making him absolutely miserable and crazy, but he loved her so much. And it was like it's like that saying where where husbands like literally die for their wives. Like he was putting his self on the line for me, you know, and as him going and spending time with his family as he should. As he should, you you want to start pouring up your own cup if you're married. This is for married couples. Um, if you are not married, you don't need to be putting yourself through that. If someone with BPD and mental health issues and everything that I just listed and putting their partner through this, this emotional abuse, they don't need to be in a relationship. People have asked me, what should I do? What should I do? If you're not married, they do not need to be in a relationship. I had no business getting into a marriage acting like that. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. one thing that God humbled me on was marriage is a gift not everyone's going to get married not everyone's going to be married not everyone's going to have some part uh not only not only in a marriage but a marriage with being in a marriage with someone who really loves them and loves the Lord loves God and follows me and is not you know seeking after their own selfish desires within the marriage you are blessed times three and you're gonna act like that you literally have no business being in a marriage and if you are this is just my honest belief perspective everything if you are with someone with mental health issues bpd and they're being emotionally abusive they don't need to be in a relationship they're not a terrible bad person they're suffering as someone who was suffering with my emotions i have so much empathy for those that are dealt with that are called narcissists and were being emotionally abusive to their spouse because I was doing that and I didn't have control over myself at all. Um, There's so many times when I would apologize to my husband after this episode, I genuinely meant that I was sorry. I just didn't know how to stop. Therefore, I had no business being in a marriage until I was healed. No business. And so when my husband did not come back, that was one of the best things he could have did for me because I had no emotional discipline, no emotional discipline. And I'm not... I'm not an advocate for divorce. I think I read in the word today, it said that um, don't divorce your spouse. Um, the situation that you're in, you know, you need to to seek it through. Um, and I believe in that. And I believe me and my husband did that. And I'm glad we did because we saw the, you know, restoration of our marriage. But the best thing he did was not come back home. Why? is because now I'm dealing with the consequences of my behavior. And because a child is supposed to learn discipline growing up from their child, from their um, growing up in their childhood and their parents are supposed to teach them emotional discipline. They're, every time they lash out or have attention, whatever, they need to get a spanking or a whooping or feel some type of consequence as you cannot go into your adulthood acting like this, right? A lot of us don't have that. And especially if you had a single mother, if you were with a single mother and she was, she was struggling with her own emotions. You weren't taught how to be dis. You weren't taught how to have emotional discipline. So now I'm an adult, and nobody's. My husband can't. We're not leaving. We're not living the time where men were smacking their women. We're not living those times. I can call the police on him as soon as he puts his hand on me. Like there's no discipline. I can't get no spanking by my husband. You know what I'm saying? Like d- just being funny, but for real, there's no. I don't have no discipline, and so him leaving me was me facing the consequences of my actions. And what happened was now I'm dealing. Now I'm being disciplined as an adult. Okay, now you're put in this position. You have to suffer the consequences. And honestly, I took it a step further where I started being the parent to my own inner child. I realized I didn't have a parent that 
discipline me. Therefore, someone else is going to have to do it and it's going to have to be me. Right. I'm going to have to parent my own inner child. And so I started disciplining myself. I was alone. And every time I acted out of a chaotic way in an emotional state, I disciplined myself. There's going to be consequences now. It was so crazy and so spiritual. But I even I even <clears throat> would hear this little girl in my mind. It was so creepy and scary and maybe linked to you know, they, they try to diagnose you for everything, but the schizophrenic, you know, episodes or whatever. But I believe it was very, very spiritual. Of course, I'm a, I'm a believer in, in the word of God. And I do put a name to something so that I know how to attack it. Um, and putting a name to these these things helped me to be able to attack it and identify it. Um, but I was I was hearing this like little girl who I would be laying in bed and I would hear another voice and it was so nagging and annoying. And I realized that's what my husband was dealing with, con- you know, consistently. And I would hear this little girl who would be like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Because now I'm alone in this apartment by myself. And I hear this little girl saying, I, I'm scared, I'm scared, we're all alone, he left us. And I would say, you're not a kid, you're a grown woman, you're 20, I was 24 at the time, you're 24 years old. 24 year olds live by themselves. <laughs> 24 year olds are single and by themselves. You can you can manage through being alone in the apartment. Um, and that's another symptom of having BPD is that you're so afraid of being alone. And you need to be. If you want to heal and you have these symptoms, like I listed today, you need to be by yourself. You do. Um, you need to master that. You need to master uh, being alone by yourself. Stop going into relationship after relationship, trying to fill the void. Stop going into relationship in the relationship because being in a relationship with someone else and their love dictates if you love yourself. That's what I was doing prior. And that's what I realized that cycle that I was in, that I could not love myself being alone. I could not love being by myself. I had no joy with me. So I was always looking for people to validate me and to love me for me to love myself and that's something as human beings we all desire love and validation so it's something you're gonna have to like balance because it's okay to like you know want love and desire that but you also have to like be able not to be chasing after that so bad so badly so with that being said build your self-awareness live in the present um Hold yourself accountable to every bad thing that's happened to you. My husband leaving, I had to hold myself accountable that I am not a victim. I'm not a victim. Every single thing, even my past relationship, every single thing I've been in, I need to hold myself accountable. If it was, if I had a serial cheater boyfriend, what, what am I doing in this? Rela- Why did I stay here? Right? It was the desperation for love and validation. Or maybe I like the thrill the toxic thrill remind me of home. I need to hold myself accountable. And when you hold yourself accountable for every single thing, not blame, accountability, you will see your life miraculously change. And also, again, another way to change is you need to build your foundation on God. You need to build a foundation. I, I'm a believer in God and I don't want to really tell people how to live their life, but God told me my identity And he told me my purpose. And once I got so rooted in my purpose with God, oh, it's so much easier to live life because I'm not looking for other people to tell me who I am. Social media going to tell you that you 16, 15 different people. And that's probably why you, you struggling. Right. God told me who I am as a woman, my role, my place, how to be a wife, how to be a friend, you know, how to live this life. And that helps me. That guideline helps me so much. So. That is, for the most part, um, my input so far about these mental health issues. And you can relieve these symptoms. You can. You have to actively work hard. Stop trying to, for those with the partner, stop trying to make your partner, stop trying to love your partner out of their mental health. (laughs) They need to want to change. They need to want to change. They need to be able to see it for themselves. They have to put in a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's it's not easy. It, it was one of the hardest things I ever did. I needed to be absolutely alone and super hyper focused and want this more than anybody else could possibly want it for me, for me to change. And if you're living as a narcissist and there's nothing wrong with you and they think there's nothing wrong with them and they're saying that, there's no coming that you got to like leave that person alone. 
even to be in a marriage, a really healthy marriage, both of y'all have to be taking accountability. Stop blaming your husband for the downfall of your marriage. Stop blaming your wife for the downfall of your marriage. Both of y'all are contributing to it. Both of y'all, you know, and that's how it, there's no reason to hate the other person. How'd you get in this situation? Um, and so that's what I kind of have to say. That's my advice and my input. Getting, especially when you're, if you're trying, if your goal is to be in a marriage, people that are unhealed don't need to be in a relationship. They don't. They don't. A lot. I see a lot of women who are single and they have come to terms with God that the reason why they're single is because they have a lot of trauma to work through. And when they learn a lot about marriage, they learn that marriage, you will be stuck with your trauma up in that marriage. Okay. There's no getting out of it. Okay, your partner is going to trigger you every day. You're stuck in that situation. So if you're not healed now and you don't learn great communication skills and how to heal, um, how to work through guys' issues and uh, now, then uh, being with someone who's already uh, showing signs that they're not going to be a good partner um, in the long run, you need to take some space away. I don't think a, I don't think a person that's suffering with mental health or being emotionally abusive and then apologizing the next day is someone that needs to be in a relationship right now. And I know you love that person. And I want to say how much I admire the men because again, there's so many women with BPD today. It's three times higher in women than men. And again, I've seen that so many men are very frustrated with women because a lot of women are all acting the same, right? And they're high, they're very emotional. They're, they're undisciplined emotionally. And, whenever a man puts his foot down with a woman she calls him abusive controlling and narcissistic but he's like bro i wish you could see yourself i wish you could look at yourself in the mirror and see how you're acting gosh what do i do how do i wake you up and i get it and i want to say like after my healing process like i admire the men that do that i know there's men that aren't good men i know there's women that aren't good women i know there's great men and i know there's great women i know there's men that are trying so hard right now <laughs> And that's why so many men are not getting married. They're they're in relationship and they want the intimacy and love, but they're not getting married because in the long run, they're dealing with so many people, so many women that are having mental health issues. So I would just want to say I admire that. But but you also deserve peace. You also deserve love. And you need to. And don't get I would say don't get caught up thinking that this is normal. That's how life is supposed to look like and be that you're supposed to take all of that abuse. No. So just to answer that, um, I want to say thank you guys again for supporting my podcast. I'll definitely get on some more and, and talk some more about how to combat some of these symptoms and to relieve them. God is good. You know, again, don't forget to read your word. Don't forget to read your word for my believers that follow me. Um, it is so healing and it's so good for your soul. Um, don't, don't forget that a mustard seed of faith can move a mountain. So if you truly believe that change can happen, it is, it's very possible. Also, don't forget to exercise, to work out, um, spend time with yourself, self-love, do cognitive therapy, um, pinpoint the trauma, and to pinpoint your triggers, really get to know your triggers, um, why you are triggered, why you're acting that way, way. and um, yeah, so, and a diary, oh, last thing, diary, uh, <laughs> let out your emotions in a diary, so for the women that are struggling, or people with BPD that are struggling with lashing out at emotional outbursts, um, have a diary or I didn't have a diary on hand and my emotional outburst could happen any minute at any time. I would pull out my phone and start recording myself and just talking to the camera. So I have like these 18 minute videos in my phone from when I had these emotional outbursts <laughs> and uh, uh, it helped me to get it out immediately because that that was part of the BPD was like I just when I felt everything it was just like it would just rise up and expand and feel like this huge ball and I was like ah, I, I can't not with uh, I can't shut my mouth. So how have a, a place to go to instantly to let this out, right? Because your partner does not need to hear all of your emotions and does not need to consistently deal with your emotional outbursts that turn into emotional abuse, that turn into fights, that turn into arguments. They don't need to be dealing with that, right? Get leveled out by going to a diary, going to a journal, going to um, your phone and recording, you know, this emotional outburst and getting that out first to come to a neutral place to then 
communicate with your partner. All right. So that's about it. That's about it for right now. Go ahead and send me DMs. Go ahead and send me messages. Write out your guys' questions, concerns. I will come back. I will answer them. I'll talk more um, with you guys. Again, check out my coaching if you want to learn more, if you want to speak more, if you want to talk more. I am so available. Link down below in my YouTube uh, on this YouTube video. And the link will also be on my Instagram podcast uh, in the pillar. So check me out. Come see me. Come talk to me. And thank you for tuning in to episode eight.